The outlook for the week, uh, lots of risk, lots of reward. All the risk we should have been taking for the last 30 years, bruh. All this shit was exported and sent to China. That's the risk we're taking. People have no freaking idea what it takes to not only take a 50 year old company over, but an infrastructure of 170,000 square feet and then merge that together with another company. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. So I think it's, what's important is, is for people to see that you're here to learn first. Before you start going and changing shit, you gotta get understanding, gotta build relationships. So short term, you know, get, get the facility looking new again, paint the walls, clean the floors, we're getting a floor cleaning. And what we wanna do is we wanna lean out the factory, right? And that's really why Andy's here. Are you familiar with the Yamazumi chart? Fact equals customer demand divided by production time. You know, you've got that buffer to absorb those fluctuations. It's not a perfect system, it's a uh, functional prototype. I made this whole thing in my basement, pretty much. So I run the footwear division currently, but my background's in lean manufacturing, consulting, and so that's what I'm here for is try to, to find those process improvements and ways to make everything flow better, faster, easier. We want to inject, you know, the a robot with a yeah. transport, yeah. Basically, let's just say this is the, the main sewing unit here. This becomes kind of the, the mole lane. This is the military. Let's say that the jeans lines were set up so they're going this direction. The mole's dropping the goods off here and it's going to the wash house. It's coming back around, however, and and it's gonna drop off into inspection. inspection. It's inspection here. Right yeah. We had talked about maybe putting it here, right? But so that's kinda that's kinda what we're thinking. The engineering firm that would help design all of this is trying to get here before I leave to try to start talking about what's the scope look like, get like a just a high level yeah, feasibility that would, that, and cost. That would... You can see how every machine is just spread out, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to like look at condensing everything to go from batch processing to like single, single piece, piece flow. And the idea being when one piece of material is picked up, somebody's working on that the entire time until it comes off the line. And then it really improves the lead time. We're gonna do some uh, hands-on exercises to explain why batching is bad. Three people, take a seat. There's two exercises to try to help explain why batching is bad. So the first exercise, we're going to stuff envelopes and an assembly line. The first round is a batch method. John, your entire job is going to take a piece of paper and tri-fold it. Then you're gonna pass all four as a batch to Jason. Jason's gonna take one, grab an envelope, stuff it, set it to the side, address it. Three, two, one, start. If I had a good engineer, he'd give us all standard methods. That's right. <laughs> all right, so that was one minute, 52 seconds. So now we'll do it single piece flow. John, trifold, pass it on. Jason, stuff it, pass it on. Ready? Go. Five zero. Like the time the customer waits to get it, the lead time, is so much less because it's not sitting and waiting in between. Each time it stops and it waits for that batch to move on, the lead time it increases. I like coming into a place that feels good. A lot of that is cleanliness, starting with getting rid of all the shit you haven't touched in years. I want to feel like you're walking into a lab. Like this, this doesn't work for me. Like what is that right there? What is this? Why is this door open? Why is there a fan on this control board? Let's just fix the control board. What are we stapling? What is this battery for? Why is there a seat right here? This is, do you wanna work here? So what no. we did is we did a first pass where we, all the stuff we knew had to go. Okay. And I was like, keep what we don't know yet. Okay. And so that's this. So now we're gonna do a second pass and yeah. I like this machine. Dump it. That's yeah. an idea. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, a yeah, you can crushing my soul. That's what we're doing right Trunch now. It out. Yeah, throwing stuff out. They gave him all the machines. You know how long it took me to find one of those machines originally? Forever. I couldn't, and now I'm throwing away a bunch. Of, I mean, they're parts, but. Uh, What's up, guys? So we're making our jackets 
I sew everything myself because uh, I need to make sure it's perfect. The industrial machines so, that built America, I hate to throw them away. A lot of these machines were made in the US. I'm trying to reinvent the uniform. Like we found some old, old cool black machines, some old Singer. They're like solid, like black from like the 20s and 30s. Like you don't see that shit anymore. That could have ended up in the dumpster, you know? Instead of an origin factory store in Portland, Maine. So I'm gonna get back to stitching. All right guys, we'll see you later. This is, this is the exciting part of rebuilding manufacturing in America. Kind of taking a stroll through memory lane, and you're also kind of like Indiana Jones, right? So you're discovering things along the way. Part of the passion. Yeah, yeah. this is the correct one. It's part of the passion. Okay, I'll be up there in two minutes. All right, bye. So this is the engineering firm that is going to help us evaluate whether we want to do the automated guidance system for material delivery. I'm John. Nice to meet you. John. Ben. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm John. John. The core doesn't look too bad. It's one thing we have to consider with automated vehicles in general. If we go with carts, there'll be magnetic tape with RFID tags. What I was envisioning was stuff comes out on the ABC out of cutting, and it knows where to stop based on the product somehow because this will be We're one, one month into the acquisition and transition. It was just going pretty good. It's gonna sound crazy. We're gonna grow out of this space. This isn't gonna be big enough. It's gonna be a, a big part of our future home. I mean, I like to create a space where people find value and fulfillment, right? It's, and it's not just the monetary side. It is truly creating a good work environment with good people, with solid leadership, because everybody wants to be part of something. You know, it's why people play sports. It's why we do jujitsu. Like sharing in this communal thing and a factory with that type of culture, like we built in Maine, we want to inject down here. Yo, yo. What's up, man? Dude, doing a, sitting here doing a taste test with Dave. Tell me. Hey, he's right here, you're on speaker. All right, Dave, what do you think? Night and day. Night and day, I like it. <laughs> I haven't even tried them yet, the most recent version. Oh, that's what I'm about to do. <laughs> the one thing that we were lacking on a little bit was flavor and sweetness with a the, with the little bit of the aftertaste and that's all gone. Now it's on par or better than anything else on the market. Except it's good for you. Good. <laughs> Damn it tastes it tastes like that drink. Rhymes with right and kite and fight. Ooh. Definitely got a definitely got that cherry. <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Damn. Hi Palmer. Is Jocko gonna like move up the rankings? Tastes like iced tea. Sour apple! We gotta get GP, JP back up to number one. That sounds like a Jolly Rancher, all right. Hold on. I like it, I like it, I think it tastes really good. People aren't gonna savor these, they're gonna crush them. Oh man, that smells really good. That's good, yeah, that's good, that's good. All right, last one. Nice, smells, uh, it's like a, like a bubblicious, like a, got a, uh, notes of bubblicious-ness. Mm. Ooh, it does. Doesn't it? Oh, this is my favorite flavor. Yeah, I knew it would be. This is my favorite flavor. Bro, dude, watermelon's good. It is. Watermelon's like legit good. Nobody else that has this level of active ingredients in their product is using only natural flavors and natural sweetness with no sugar and no preservatives that, that, that's pasteurizing it. There's nobody doing this now, and then... There will be nobody else ever saying like, oh, I'm not too thrilled with the flavor. No. Like, like if they don't like the flavor, they have no taste buds. <laughs>